The Legend of Zelda series dates back to the original Nintendo Entertainment System and is easily one of my personal favorites. When The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom released on the Nintendo Switch this past May, I felt like we had this unique opportunity to help students advance their understanding and knowledge of machine design and engineering. What surprised me as I was playing through the game was the unexpected emphasis on machine design and engineering. So the game includes a number of different types of machine elements, like rockets, motorized wheels, propellers. And what's interesting is that each of these different machine elements uses energy differently. In engineering fields, we use computer-aided design, or CAD software, to design everything from vehicles, to robots, to everyday mechanical parts. The game actually includes its own CAD interface, and while it's a simplified CAD interface, it's very intuitive, and it's really useful for building a number of different types of machines. One of the genuine surprises of the game was just how sophisticated the physics are. So in engineering fields, we might spend tens of thousands of dollars a year to license sophisticated software to model these kinds of physics. But with a Nintendo Switch and the video game, we're able to replicate very similar functionalities. In this semester, we have our very first pilot run of the course, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to Machine Design, which is designed for second year undergraduate students in mechanical engineering. Students enrolled in the course are divided into teams, and then each team is given a Nintendo Switch, a game cartridge, a pro controller, and they're allowed to take these home for the duration of the semester. The course is divided into three main parts. First, students learn the basics of the different machine elements by completing problem-solving challenges within the game. After that, the teams are given a particular machine element to investigate, and then report back to the class different types of performance, like horsepower or thrust. Lastly, we have the machine design challenges. For example, to design and prototype a transforming, bio-inspired, amphibious robotic vehicle. A major part of the grading comes down to an in-class race of their machines. Basically, whoever can complete the race fastest, both on land and water, is going to get an A+. On your marks, get set, go! We believe this semester's pilot run of the course is just the beginning. We hope to leverage this special opportunity in which a video game is actually able to provide reasonably authentic and relevant learning experiences for students to inspire a lasting interest and confidence in machine design, engineering, and robotics.